All right, time for our last lesson in voyages. So we want to turn to page 100. We do not have a daily maintenance to do because this is part two of coordinating conjunctions, lesson 6.9. So let's get our highlighters and our pencils ready. And all of the pages that we have done in units um, five and six, and there was one page left in unit one and as well as I think unit four, five, six, no, yep. so anyways, all of your pages from when we got out on March 13th all the way through today should be turned in either Friday, May 8th or Friday, May 15th. That would be the last day to turn in work. All right, so page 100. We're going to start off with our highlighters, and then we'll go to our pencils for the last two parts. So remember, yester um, yesterday we practiced our conjunctions, coordinating conjunctions, and, but, and, or. And we talked about how you use and between words, phrases, or sentence parts in which you are um, comparing things that are alike. You use but if you're trying to show um, that they are different. And then you use or if you're looking to give a choice to somebody. So for the first seven, um, you are going to just we're just going to identify them again, which is what we did yesterday, just to make sure that we know what we're doing. Um, there should only be one in the sentence. Number one, deer and rabbits come out at dusk. So I see the conjunction. And, and again, they're putting them together. Deer and rabbits are in the same group, so we use the conjunction and. Now, put your highlighters away, and let's go to number five, um, number eight. And here we're going to write, rewrite the sentences using the correct conjun coordinating conjunctions. And we're going to do all um, four of these together. Uh, we've practiced this before, but it's been a while, so I want to practice writing the sentences together. You're going to need to finish two through seven on your own. And I'm going to let you do 12, 13, and 14 on your own. So number eight, the package should arrive on Monday and Tuesday. Well, that doesn't make sense. A package can't come on two days. So we're saying, we definitely don't want to say they're alike. Do we want to say that they're different? Or do we want to give a choice? Well, we're saying that it could be Monday and it could be Tuesday so that's a choice so our sent sentence should say the package should arrive Monday or Tuesday now if we have just oops, put my period there if we have just two words that we're separating, our conjunction does not have a comma. We're used to using commas with them because we are used to joining um, sentences, especially clauses that can't stand by themselves. So when you're only doing it between two words or two really short phrases, you don't use your comma. The package should arrive Monday or Tuesday. All right, if you didn't have time to copy that down, make sure that you pause the video and finish it and come back. Number two, our dog, or number nine, our dog is small or strong. Small or strong. Well, I, it, we're not choosing whether our dog is small or our dog is strong. We're saying that our dog is both of those things. However, small and strong, are they things you would compare or are you showing differences? The small mean something similar to strong? No. So I would use but. Our dog is small but strong. 
because it's unusual to be strong and small at the same time. So I would use but. And again, I used no, I didn't use a comma. Our dog is small but strong. All right, I'm going to erase that. You can pause the video and continue copying if you need to. All right, number 10. He mowed the lawn or trimmed the trees. Okay. Well, that is incorrect because he didn't do either or. He did both. So, if we're going to say that he did both, we would use and. He mowed the lawn and he, oops, we didn't use he in there again, and trimmed the trees. All right, so because this one, I'm going to, I had to get that in there. We are going to use a comma on this one because we are basically putting two sentences together. He mowed the lawn. He trimmed the trees. We took out he and we added and to show that he did both of those. So we're going to put a comma between lawn and and to show that we are combining two sentences. He trimmed the lawn and, or he mowed the lawn and trimmed the trees. All right, last one, number 11. It says, the blender is on the counter, but in the cupboard. Well, that makes no sense. All right, so you need to find your blender. It is in one of two places. So what are you doing? You're giving an option. So, but should not be there, it should be or. And again, this is comparing two sentence parts. We're going to use a comma here. So we're going to say the blender is on the counter, comma, or in the cupboard. It's a long sentence. All right. The blender is on the counter, comma, or in the cupboard. Because we could say the blender is in the cupboard. The blender is on the counter. It's a much more well-written sentence if we put them together instead of two choppy sentences that have exactly the same um, subjects. But when we are combining two sentences, like on 10 and 11, we always use our commas. If we're just separating two words, we only we don't use a comma. All right, I'll let you finish copying that. Um, you can always pause it if you need to. Then the last thing you're going to do um, is 12, 13, and 14, and you're supposed to write a sentence using one of the three conjunctions. So for number 12, you need to use and in your sentence, and in 13, you need to use but, and in 14, you need to use or. And then um, your response, of course, will be to read me the three original sentences that you wrote to show me that you understand using a coordinating conjunction. All right, and we are done with our grammar voyages for the year. We're going to continue working on America, on our proofreading, and that will be grammar for the rest of this week and for next week. All right.